Rich County, to some, may just be a cold corner in northeast Utah. But to those who call it home, Rich County is a place where competitors live and championships are born. Under first-year head coach Lex Cornea, Rich men's basketball looks to turn things around. With no shortage of returning firepower and a hard-nosed rebel defense being instilled, the boys who call Rich home are prepared to dominate on the hardwood. Welcome into another broadcast of Rich Men's Basketball on my local radio. This broadcast could not be possible without these rebel supporting businesses. Evanston Regional Hospital, Hoover Chiropractic, Cash Honda Yamaha in Cash Valley, the Come On In in Casper, Plains Tire, the Best Western Dunmar Inn and Legal Tender, Freeway Tire, Auto Farm Chevrolet, West Star Printing, and Rocky Mountain Sign. All right, Rebel fans, get ready as it's time to join the voice of the Rebels, Matthew Peterson, down at the court for another edition of Rebel Basketball. Good afternoon, Rebel fans, and welcome to Randolph, Utah, for today's matchup between the Rich Rebels and the Utah School for Deaf and Blind Eagles. I'm Matthew Peterson, happy to have you alongside me for this broadcast of Rich High Boys Basketball. We're here on the Gary Tusher pregame show. It's the home for all of your county needs. You can give them a call at 208-847-2601 up there in Montpelier, Idaho or visit him at www.garytcpa.com. We got a lot of ground to cover in our Gary Tusher pregame show and about 20 minutes to go until tip off. So we're gonna get right into it with the J-Bar Excavation scene set. Learn a little bit about the two sides right after this. It's the Rebels and Eagles going at it. <laughs> the things you work hardest for in life are your family and your money. Taking care of the money you earn is an important part of taking care of your family. Gary Tusher, CPA of Montpelier, Idaho, is a rancher who's also provided professional tax preparation and financial services for more than 30 years. When it comes to taxes and your money, make sure it's handled the best way possible. Call me today, 208-847-2601. Get into our J Bar excavation scene set. The team, the tools, and the experience for your excavation project. Give them a call at 435 793 5855. So the visiting USDB Eagles come in with a 1 and 7 overall record. That lone win coming in overtime on the road against Dugway. That was the last time they were out on the court this past Tuesday. Offensively, they're averaging a little over actually 32 points per game and defensively surrendering 60 points per game. So the Rich Rebels are coming in with an 8 and 5 record, winning 5 out of 7 in the new year. And the last time on the court, the Rebels gave up a season-high 77 points on the road in Mount Vernon against the Patriots. So they'll look to correct that defensive form today against the Eagles. That's our scene set. We've got more ground to go over in the Gary Tusher pregame show. We'll have our Western Ag Credit standout student up next. A little under 20 minutes to go until tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. Whether you're looking for gravel, sand, topsoil, rock, or other materials for your excavation or landscaping project, trust the experienced, knowledgeable team at J-Bar Excavation, specializing in sale and delivery of the materials you need to finish your project. J-Bar Excavation in Randolph, Utah, has the team, the tools, and the plan to help you create exactly what you're looking for. J-Bar does quality work that fits your schedule and your budget. Call J-Bar Excavation today, 435-793-5855. This presentation of Rich High School Athletics on MyLocalRadio.com is brought to you by these Rebel Sports Boosters. LSR Refrigerated and the Wallatines in Garden City. Darren, Trisha, and the entire Wallatine clan wish the Rebels good luck. And by Cat Answer Technical Services. 
proudly supporting the Rich Rebels. The staff at Cat Answer Technical Services wish the Rebels good luck on the field, on the court, in the classroom, and in life. I'm now with my standout student. It is Junior Hannah Rex. Hannah, thank you so much for the time today. I want to begin by asking you, what, what activities are you involved in here at Rich High? Um, I'm a cheerleader here at Rich High. And how long have you been on the cheer team for? Um, this is my first year. First year, so what made you want to start cheer going into your junior year? Well, I danced and I did cheer as a young child, so I thought it'd be fun to do it this year. Awesome, absolutely. And before you started cheering, what other things did you keep yourself busy with here at Rich? Um, I did golf. Golf, okay. So have you been a longtime golfer? Um, what's been the history there? I started when I was a freshman, but as a family we used wood golf. Gotcha, okay. And are you more of a driver or do you clean up on the green? I'm more of a driver. I'm not very good on the green. <laughs> That's okay. I'm pretty sure 90% of Americans three putt their way to every hole. <laughs> um, Hannah, let's talk a little bit about uh, what you do outside of Rich. So on the weekends, when you're not in the classroom, what are some of your favorite hobbies and activities? I work a lot, but when I'm not, I'll sing song, right? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so you kind of got a toe in a bunch of different ponds here. Are you excited for the musical coming up? Yeah, I am. And have you been involved in that before, or is this the first year? Yeah, I started when I was a freshman. Okay, and what kind of roles do you like to do? Um, I try to do lead roles. I'm kind of a very shy person when it comes to, like, in front of crowds, but I'm a very social person when it's not in front of a lot of people. Well, that's awesome. So if my math is right, you've done golf, cheer, and musical. So what are you keeping in store and what are you waiting for to do senior year? Um, I had my plan life out as a trauma surgeon in the medical field, but for senior year, I think I want to focus on what would be a good idea for my future. I definitely do golf and possibly cheer again. Wow, let's rewind for to the, you want to be a trauma surgeon? I did, but not anymore. Not anymore. It, did that come from watching lots of Grey's Anatomy, or where was that born from? <laughs> yeah, that was from a lot of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you have an idea of maybe what you want to do instead? But you got plenty of time anyway to figure that out. Well, I've always really wanted to become an artist, but for a side little backup plan, I think I'd go into business or entrepreneurship. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so you've definitely got plenty of time, and you've got plenty of avenues to explore. I'm here with Rich High Jr. Hannah Rex. Hannah, one final question for you. Uh, we've got Coach Pace next to us right now. So with her ears closed, what kind of coach is Coach Pace and how much fun is it working with her? Um, she's fun. She makes us work hard and she definitely helps us get better. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for the time today. I had a blast catching up with you. Thank you. That is Rich High Jr. Hannah Rex. Our standout student portion of the pregame show always brought to you by Western Ag Credit, your partner in agriculture. We've got a little under 15 minutes to go until tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. We'll step aside for another quick break, and when we return, we're going to move into the T7 Propane Coaches Show portion of the broadcast. Don't go anywhere. We're closing in on tip-off this afternoon between the Rebels and the Eagles. When your vehicle needs new tires, any tire store can get you back on the road. But only Plains Tire can get you rolling again with the peace of mind that you were treated well, paid a fair price, and that you'll be taken care of for the life of the tire. At Plains Tire, trained tire technicians mount and expertly balance your new tires, replace the valve stems, and hand check each lug nut to make sure it's all tight and secure. Plus, you'll get lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations only at Plains Tire, 157 Bear River Drive, Evanston. Visit PlainsTire.com. Whether you need a big bite to eat, a tasty snack, or a sweet treat, the Crawford Trough in Randolph has it all to satisfy your cravings. From tasty burgers and wraps, patty melts and perfect pitas to fresh salads, home-cut fries, crispy onion rings, and of course, that silky smooth ice cream. The Crawford Trough can feed your hunger and then some. And if you haven't tried one of the trough's mixed sodas, your taste buds don't know what they're missing. Stop in today at the place to eat and drink, the Crawford Trough at 120 South Main, Randolph. All right, welcome back here to the 
Gary Tusha pregame show. Now it's time for the T7 Pro Propane Coaches Show. Before we get into that, I want to introduce the two coaches for today. So Rebels coach, as always, in his first year, Lex Cornia and his team entering with an 8-5 overall record. Meanwhile, the visiting USDB Eagles are coached by first-year head coach A.J. Moody. Had a wonderful conversation with Coach Moody. I'm looking forward for, for forward to everyone else hearing it. But as always, our Coach's Show is presented to you by T7 Propane in Woodruff. For all of your propane needs, give them a call at 435-793-4208. We'll step aside for another quick break. And when we return, it is the Eagles head coach, A.J. Moody. Whether it's for your home, your ranch, your equipment, or your business, when you need propane, count on the best. T7 Propane in Woodruff. The safe and professional team at T7 Propane offers quality product and the most responsive propane service in the area, so you can enjoy the affordability, reliability, and efficiency of propane. For heating, cooking, grilling, motor fuel, and more, count on the team at T7 for your personal or business propane needs. 435-793-4208. Welcome into the T7 Propane Coaches Show. I'm with the USDB Boys Basketball Head Coach, Coach Moody. Coach, I want to thank you for your time today, and let's start this interview off by asking about how the Eagles have been playing so far through your eyes this season. Well, uh, the Eagles playing so far is pretty good. Uh, we are we have seven players. Uh, before we had 14, and now we're down to seven, but we are still. Uh, we're still doing all right. We had uh, we had more than 14 players last year with some experience, and we lost the players. So it's more of a new newbies. We got some newbies this year. They're still learning. Um, I'm pretty confident with our boys. Uh, they're just going to build their foundation, the fundamentals, and uh, confidence, and so they're able to win games as we go on. Coach Moody, what is Eagle basketball looking like this season in terms of your style of play? Well, uh, I'm new this year. I'm a first-year coach for the Eagles. And uh, my principles for basketball is to keep it old-fashioned. Do the basic way, the fundamental way. Don't be like, you know, the NBA players. We're not trying to be like, you know, fantasy players. You know, we're going to keep the basic, keep it old-fashioned, um, and keep connection connected to the game. You know, we want to have fun in the game instead of making it too complicated. That's my style. Coach Moody, can you tell me a little bit about your team and in terms of some of the obstacles you guys have to overcome on the court? Oh, well, most of our obstacles are, are it's communication. You know, um, a hearing team can talk to each other. They can hear each other on the court. Uh, for deaf people, we gotta, I got to use my arms to talk to them. You know, I got to get their attention. Then they have to look at me, and then I finally am able to talk to them. You know, we could waste 30 seconds just getting their, their uh, attention. And, you know, basketball is a quick sport. We don't have time for, to, to really, uh, you know, use that time with the communication. So that's a barrier, uh, you know, even to try to get a timeout or to get somebody substituted in or, you know, we got, you know what we have going on, that's actually our biggest communication uh, is the biggest barrier. But so far, we're doing all right. Coach, when it comes to communication, are there ways you guys can work around that that may be unique to your team? Well, yeah, actually. Um, one positive thing is, um, you know, hearing players uh, don't know what we're talking about. You know, if I sign out to the team, nobody knows what I'm talking about. If a hearing coach uh, is talking to their team, we know what they're doing. You know, somebody else, you know, if you have a hearing uh, uh, opponent, you know, they don't know what our ga game plan is. I mean, hearing people don't understand that sign language, so that's actually an advantage for us as deaf players. I'm with the boys basketball head coach for USDB, Coach A.J. Moody. Coach, one final question for you today. Can you tell me what you know about – We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm hoping it's a good game, and we'll, we'll see what happens from that, from there. Um, we got about four, five guys on the coach – I mean, on the, on the court. So, you know, come on and see what happens. I think it's going to be a good game. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it myself. Can't wait for the matchup. Coach, thank you so much for the time today. Best of luck. Hey, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me here today for this conversation. Absolutely. That is Coach Moody for the Eagles on our T7 Propane Coaches Show.
Whether you're kicking up dust in the hills, making waves down on the lake, or taking advantage of the world's greatest power, don't just hope to have fun. Take that sled by the handlebars and make your time at Bear Lake epic. Epic Recreation rents equipment and cabins for your vacation fun at beautiful Bear Lake. From watercraft large and small to UTVs, sleds, and more, Epic Recreation has it all to go on-road, off-road, or out on the Caribbean blue water. Book your adventure at epicrecreation.net. It's human nature to think the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. That's not always true, especially when it comes to buying vehicles. This is Dennis Lynch, General Manager at Auto Farm Chevrolet. Dealerships pay the same price for new vehicles across America. The fact is the best deals are right here, in your own backyard. The difference is that our employees are your neighbors, people you can trust. Please visit us first, Auto Farm Chevrolet. We are your community-driven dealer. Nothing makes your kid feel like a superstar more than seeing his or her very own fat head in the stands. Fathead car decals and yard signs are inexpensive and easy to get at Rocky Mountain Sign in Evanston. Whether it's for the big game or to cheer on the high school band, our children make us proud in so many ways. Show your pride today. Go Rebels! West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street, Evanston. This presentation of Rich High School Athletics on MyLocalRadio.com is brought to you by these Rebel Sports Boosters. The Wilson Ranch in Randolph. Good luck, Rebels, from Dale, Kim, Kyler, and Casey. Remember, the harder you work, the more good luck you'll have. And by Argyle Ranch Saddle and Boot, Feed and Supply, a custom shop specializing in leather and wood goods with a farm feed and supply store to boot. Proudly supporting the Rich Rebels, the Argyle Ranch Saddle and Boot Feed and Supply Store. Welcome into the T7 Propane Coaches Show. I'm now with Rich High Boys Basketball Head Coach, Lex Cornia. Coach Cornia, it's been a stressful week, I'd imagine, for you guys. Had some cancellations last week, but it looks like you got the green light for this week. How does that change the tempo and the mood of practice, or are you guys able to put put those distractions behind you? I mean, well, that's the effort is to not be distracted, but, uh, I mean... These guys are 17 years old, and, and I know professional athletes, you know, you watch the NBA bubble. It's, there's just a lot going on, a lot to think about. Um, but I think the attitude to take with it is, for us, is just gratitude. You know, we can still play. We still have practice this week. Um, we were able to reschedule those two games that were canceled. You know, they're not canceled, they're just moved. And uh, I think we just need to be grateful to still be going, still be with each other. We still have practice today and, and know that we're very, very fortunate. You know, I think these guys realize just how close on any given day in our current situation a team can be to, to being done and not playing again. And uh, so you really just have to, you know, love every minute that you have a chance to play and, uh, and you know, take advantage of that. So I think that's the attitude is, uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do, but just be grateful to be out here, be working to get better and to have games this weekend and uh, be looking at a state tournament and performing well and, and, and just really enjoy each moment. Coach, last time on the court, you guys lost to Mount Vernon on the road, and that was a game where you led in the the first half, but at the end, the Patriots really caught fire beyond the arc, a lot of three-point shooting. So do you take that game and just kind of throw it out the window saying, hey, we're going to run into teams who shoot 50% from beyond the the three-point line, or are you going to chop up and analyze that game and look for ways to get better? No, we'll definitely analyze that game. I mean, in high school basketball, yes, teams can get hot, but, you know, what do you do to counter that? And I feel like that game, we were much, uh, we were not as physical as we needed to be. Um, you know, a team gets hot, you know, you, you have to now get out on them. You need to, to have more contact. Even if it is a foul or two, you need to break that rhythm up. And that's something we didn't do that night. Um, so, uh, no, you definitely analyze that game because, you know, Mount Vernon, you look at the record, they are 10 and 3. Um, they've beaten good teams in our region. They've beaten good teams from around the state. And, and they're a real team. You know, that's how they plan on beating you is putting on performances like that. So, you know, 
it's our job to take that away. Um, and I, I think that if we just look at it and say, well, this team happened to get hot against us, you know, that's a recipe for, uh, you know, for being a team that gets beat on the first night of state. You know, you have to take a, what a team does well and, and try to take that away from them. And for Mount Vernon, obviously, yeah, it's outside shooting and guard play. Um, I thought we did a poor job, um, staff and players included, of adjusting to that. But we'll see him again. And I do think Mount Vernon is a team to contend with. We could very well see them in March. Coach, as you guys get ready for the games this weekend, you've got USDB on Thursday, and then you travel to ICS on Friday. So what's going to be the biggest focal point in practice and preparation for those two teams? Um, obviously, it's guard play again. You know, I haven't seen uh, USDB, but we've we've had ICS here. Um, they play very similar to Mount Vernon. Um, they just didn't make as many shots. And uh, I, think, I really think this is a chance, as we're missing Logan, that our guards on both ends of the floor, um, just there's some things we need to, we need to improve prove at um, our ball handling just kind of our awareness our confidence getting into offenses um, handling uh, handling a kid who maybe has hit a few shot had ha- a few shots how do you take those away from him and and make the next trip down different I think it's a great week for us to um, I don't know just get our perspective back um, to know that we still have you know a month month and a half of this season to go and and there's a you know there's a lot to, to win still and there's a lot to lose um, so we need to come locked in every night Coach, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck. Thanks. Appreciate it, Matthew. That's Rich High Boys Basketball Head Coach Lex Cornia on the T7 Propane Coaches Show. Welcome back into the Gary Tusher pregame show. We've got a little over two minutes to go until tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. And that gives us just enough time to get into the rest of our pregame coverage, including the town of Lake Town Ledger. So the Rebels versus Eagles. Uh, ignore that first thing if you're looking on my local radio. It's a little difficult to find some of the historic matchups between these two sides because sometimes it goes down as a JV matchup and not a varsity matchup, which, do, which does not go into the record books. But what, can, what I can tell you is last year the Rebels took down the Eagles 52-30. to So we know that for sure. And that's about all we've got for our Lake Town ledger. Now it's time for the keys of the game. First key for the game, this is a get-right game. The Rebels are confident going into today's matchup. They gotta loosen up some, uh, tighten some loose ends from last uh, time out on the court against Mount Vernon. We've got the national anthem being played, so we'll step aside for that. And when we return, we're just about ready for tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. When do you schedule doctor appointments? In bed before I fall asleep. In the car waiting to pick up my kids. We can even do it after breakfast. We all lead busy lives. Online appointment scheduling puts you in control. In just 90 seconds, you can make an appointment with a primary care provider or specialist at evanstonanytime.com. Select the day and time most convenient for you. Enter some basic information, and just like that, you're scheduled for care. Schedule appointments for next day and beyond at evanstonanytime.com. Whatever takes you to Evanston, whether it's high school sports, a teaching conference, music festivals, speech and debate, or your job, always book your hotel reservations at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. With 165 ground-level rooms on 10 acres, the Best Western offers everything you need, including newly renovated rooms, a business office, workout room, outdoor pool, and full-service restaurant, plus complimentary breakfast with every stay. Whenever you're in Evanston, make your hotel reservations with your friends at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. This presentation of Rich High School Athletics is also brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all of the chiropractic work you need as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-789-0043. Two of the things you work hardest for in life are your family and your money. Taking care of the money you earn is an important part of taking care of your family. Gary Tusher, CPA of Montpelier, Idaho, is a rancher who's also provided professional tax preparation and financial services for more than 30 years. When it comes to taxes and your money, make sure it's handled the best way possible. Call me today, 208-847-2601. We are 
Closing in on tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. Let's check out the old Chicago pizza and tap room pregame slice. The Rebels will play in their home white uniforms with blue letters across the front and back. They'll be going from left to right. Meanwhile, the visiting USDB Eagles, they come in today with, a, with their road blue uniforms and gold numbers on the front and back. And that is it for our pregame show. It's now time for... The opening tip-off between the Rebels and the Eagles. Tip-off is won by Rich, and it goes to Scott to open it up. We'll get through the starters in a moment. Truman Huffner out there as well, and now it's with Connor Greer on the near wing. Greer picking up his dribble and going across to Scott beyond the arc, who hands it right over to Huffner. Back to Scott at the top of the key. Goes to Greer on the near wing. Connor Greer circulating it around inside of Taylor, back outside to a cutting Greer who finishes it off the glass. And just like that, the Rebels strike first on the station on main scoreboard. They lead 2-0 as Rich forces a turnover on the inbound pass against USDB. And a whistle blew, and it looks like there's a foul, and it's going to be going against the Eagles. Fouls on Kelvin, uh, Kelvin Budge, his first. Teams first as well, shooting foul. So a pair of Bear Lake Realty free throws now coming up for Riley Taylor. First free throw, no good. Taylor, who had a career game the last time he was out on the court against the Patriots a week ago, had a season-high 20 points. Doing a great job down low. Looking to build off that today. Misses both free throws, though. Rebounded by the Eagles. Bringing the ball up is Ata. And the Eagles airmail that pass out of play. It's going to be rich Rebel basketball. They'll inbound it in front of their own bench. Rebels leading 2-0 with a little over 7 to go in the opening frame. It's with Greer on the far wing. Greer takes a dribble. Now reverses his course all the way to Scott at the block. Kicks out to Huffner for 3. That's no good. Rebounded by Taylor. He goes up strong with a second chance. Carrillo gets his miss, and then another miss, but another offensive board, and this time Taylor finishes it off. 4 nothing Rebels on the station on main scoreboard. Eagles trying to get it across half court. Now they do. It goes to Castro. Ronald Castro dribbling in. Layup's good. Nifty move from Ronald. And the Eagles are on the station on main scoreboard. It's 4-2 Rebels with six and a half to go in the first quarter. On the other end, it was Greer who had a good look down low but couldn't put it home and ball got out of play. Last touch by USDB. Scott checking out and Jaden Grohl coming in. Greer to inbound it. Goes to Huffner. Inside to Carrillo, whistle blows. Travel on the junior. Eagles basketball. It's going to be an inbound play now for USDB beneath their own basket, trailing by two early here in the opening quarter. A little under six and a half to go. Budge brings the ball up. Budge passing it off to Castro on the wing. He dribbles inside the perimeter. Lost it, but regained it, trying to put a shot up. Never had a chance, it looked like, and Taylor came up with a loose ball. Huffner dribbling across half court. He goes to Scott on the near wing. Scott feeding inside and down low to Carrillo, and one. Riley Carrillo draws some contact, finishes it off the glass, and he'll shoot a free throw to make it a three-point play. Junior Riley Carrillo making a couple starts with the absence of Logan Muirbrook. Free throw up, no good. So the Rebels will start this game off with an 0 for 3 showing from the Bear Lake Realty free throw line. Budge has it on the far side for the Eagles who are working on offense. Dribbling through some traffic, picked up his dribble. Goes inside the perimeter to Neal who lost it and coming away with it was Taylor on a breakaway and he used the glass to finish it off. It is 8-2 Rebels. Neal with it on the perimeter, giving it off to Budge. Looks inside to an open Etaw, and that shot was denied, picked up by Carrillo. Carrillo hands it off to a trailing Scott. John Scott takes a couple dribbles towards the top of the arc, now goes to the near wing. 
Passes it at the free throw line to Huffner who wanted to go inside to Taylor. Ball was passed out, poked out of play. And Greer to inbound it. Goes to Scott for a corner three. Money. John Scott's on the scoreboard. It is 11 to two Rebels on the station on main scoreboard. Eagles bringing the ball across half court. It's with Budge. Budge picking up a screen, now going to Neal in the corner who dribbled inside the perimeter and looked at Castro. Whistle blows and travel called on Ronald Castro. It'll be rich Rebel basketball. Five minutes to go in the opening quarter and Coach Cornea using his bench early. We've got Taylor checking out of the game, Jaden Grohl coming in. And a substitution being made. So the Eagles make a change. They bring in Nor Kader, Nor Kader. Inbound pass to Greer. Greer dribbling across half court. Bounce pass to Grohl on the far wing. He goes cross court with it to Scott. He wanted to go to the block to Korea, who jumped up to get it and finished the play on his way down. Athletic play by Carrillo, but he's hobbling a little bit. 13 to two, Rebels. It's with Noor in the wing for the Eagles who passes it out of play. It'll be Rebel basketball. Rich with an 11 point lead on the station on main scoreboard. Greer dribbling across half court, going to Grohl on the far wing. He faces heavy pressure, so he gets rid of it to Greer. Back to Scott at the top of the wing now. Scott takes a couple dribbles in, kicks it out to Grohl for three, splashes it down. Jaden Grohl connects for his first three-point shot of the season. It's 16 to two Rebels. And we have a timeout. timeout being called. And finally, the officials get the message. Timeout called with 16, with 4.04 to go in the opening quarter. Rebels jumping out to an early lead. It's 16 to two on the station on main scoreboard. In the state where life is elevated, live your life in a higher gear. Cash Honda Yamaha can help you enjoy our beautiful local terrain, whether it's in the valleys, mountains, snow, or water. So get out and enjoy all nature has to offer at a higher speed. Visit Cash Honda Yamaha in Cash Valley to start living your life at your new speed. Visit us in Hyde Park, just north of Logan, Utah. Rebels with a 14 point advantage on the station I mean scoreboard midway through the first quarter here in Randolph. And after a timeout was called by the Eagles, they'll have it on the offensive half of the court for USDB. Welcome back into our broadcast here. It is Eagle basketball. They will inbound it directly in front of the Rebel bench. It's Eta with the inbound play. Eta looking for a friendly face. He goes up top to Noor. Noor taking a couple dribbles and handing it off to Castro. Castro looks to the elbow where Eitan was waiting for it, and now he dribbles along the top of the perimeter. Dribbling in, moving it along the perimeter for a mid-range shot by Fisher George. That was off the mark, and Eitan able to come up with the offensive rebound. However, his putback was no good. Rebels come up with a loose ball. It's Greer dribbling across half court. Greer going on the near wing to Scott. He looked inside to Grohl, who hands off to Huffner. His shot's no good. Grohl kicks it all the way out to Greer for a wing three. That's no good. Rebounded by the Eagles. Ata dri dribbling the ball up the court. Hands it off to Castro. Castro moving along the perimeter to Neal. Inside to Ata. Back outside to Castro on the wing. Dribbling in and out of the perimeter and now close to the center arc. Goes to Ata on the wing. Now it's with George in the corner. Back up to the... Castro on the wing. Castro trying to direct some traffic. He's guarded cl closely by Scott. Budge with it. Cross court pass to George who lost it momentarily. Who's got it? The Rebels do. Greer comes away with it on a breakaway. Looks to a cutting Grohl who finishes it off the backboard. 18 to two Rebels on the station on main scoreboard. 
Jaden Grohl with five points to open up the first quarter off the bench. Knorr working along the block, trying to find a friendly face, whistle blows, and jump ball is called. It's going to be Eagles basketball. With 2.31 to go in the first quarter, Rebels leading 18-2 against the visiting USDB Eagles. And we're going to have an inbound play now for USDB beneath the Rebel basket. It's Ata to inbound it. His inbound play goes to Castro in the corner. He moves it inside mid-range, and who hands it off is Ata going to Budge. Budge with a bounce pass to Ata and hand it over to Castro. They move it up top to Budge inside to Ata, looking for Budge, or looking for Neal along the block. Pass was intercepted. Rebels pushing it up the court. Greer hands it off to a trailing Huffner and back to Huffner now. Connor Greer has it on the near wing. Cross court pass goes to Scott. Rich looks inside to an open Huffner whose shot was off the target. And here comes Castro for the Eagles. Dribbles inside the paint, puts a shot up, draws some contact, and he'll shoot two. Two free throws coming up for the visiting team with 1.47 to go in the opening quarter. At the free throw line, it is Ronald Castro. Castro, a junior. First free throw on the way and good. 18-3 with 1.47 to go. We'll have a second Bear Lake Realty free throw coming up for Castro. Second free throw rolls in and out. Rebounded by Taylor. He gets it out to Scott, moves it up court to Grohl in the corner now with Greer. Back to Grohl and moved across to a Scott. Three-point shot, that's no good. Whistle blows on the rebound and it's going to be a foul. And the foul is on USDB. Braden Neal, the guilty party. It's the team's third, his second. Inbound play right now for Greer. Goes mid-range to Taylor, who wants to get rid of it. Now takes a dribble inside, puts up a shot that's short. Gets his own miss. No, he loses it. Ata comes away, and the Eagles move it up the court. Shot was deflected out of play, and it will stay with the visiting team. They'll inbound it beneath the Rebel basket with a little under 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ata inbounds it to Noor at the top of the court. He moves it across to Neal at the top of the key. At the elbow now with Budge. Budge, passing it out to Knorr. Taking a couple dribbles and picking it up and moving it over to Neal. Neal well beyond the three-point line, goes to Castro on the far wing. Just over a minute to go. Castro dribbles himself into the corner and now passes off to Ata. Ata working about mid-range level, handing it off to Jor. Castro puts up a shot, banks it in off the glass. 18-5. Rebels leading by 13 with 45 seconds to go in the first frame. Huffner has it for Rich on the far wing. Picks up a screen, dribbles in, moves it over to Scott. For three, money. John Scott nails another three-point shot. It's 21-5 Rebels. Castro working along the near wing. Dribbling around, directing traffic, 20 seconds. Castro had his pass deflected, but he got it right back. Now dribbles himself into the corner. Look to Ata, who puts up a mid-range shot. That's no good off the glass. Rebounded by Greer. Six seconds to go. Greer crossing half court. Four seconds. Scott with a three-point shot. Nails it. And that will do it for the first quarter of play. John Scott closed the first quarter out with a three-pointer. He's got nine points. And the Rebels are leading 24 to five on the station on main scoreboard.
This presentation of Rich High School Athletics is also brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all of the chiropractic work you need as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-79-0043. Signage is a critical part of your business. It helps customers find your front door. Rocky Mountain Sign will provide you with expertly designed signs, LEDs, channel letters, as well as skillfully cut signage using wood, metal, plastic, and other mediums to help your customers find you with high quality signage. Using the best technology, designs, and installation by Rocky Mountain Sign. Your signage says a lot about your business. Work with the professionals at Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street in Evanston, Wyoming. Welcome back to Randolph for the second quarter of action between the Rebels and the Eagles. Rich has a 24-5 station on main scoreboard lead as we start the Stacy's Repair second quarter. It's Nate Woods in the game right now. He passes over to Grohl. He's had some substitutions. Hayden Weston working along the block. Puts a shot up and finishes it off. 26-5 Rebels as Hayden Weston picks up his first basket of the season. Utah School for Deaf and Blind just played it out of bounds. It's going to be Rebel basketball. Let's run through who's in the game right now for the Rebels as, as Coach Corny has gone to his bench. We've got junior Nate Woods along with sophomore Trey Walker, junior Riley Carrillo, junior Hayden Weston, and senior Jaden Grohl. That's the five right now for Rich. Woods picks up his dribble, goes to Walker. Now down on the block for Weston. Contact, bodies hit the floor. Whistle blows and Weston gingerly gets up and shakes off that right foot. 7.23 to go in the Stacey's Repair second quarter. Rebels leading 26 to five and that last whistle was because of an offensive foul on Weston. Carrillo checking out of the game right now and it's Justin Adams coming in. USDB bringing the ball up the court. Budge dribbles along the baseline, kicks it out to Castro on the, in the corner. Back to Budge, and entry pass was taken away, and Grohl comes up with it. Here come the Rebels, picking up their speed. Grohl inside the paint, shot rolls in. 28-5 Rebels. Jaden Grohl having a strong start today. And USDB puts up a shot and one. Good play there by Kelvin Budge. And it moves the score to 28 to seven with a potential three point play on the way. It will be Budge to shoot the free throw. Trying to make it a 20 point game with 6.47 to go in the Stacey's repair second quarter. Free throw up and no good. Rebounded by Adams. Pulls it in, gets it out to Walker, who moves it up to Grohl. Now in the corner with Woods. Out to Grohl on the near wing. Jaden Grohl picks, takes a dribble, then passes to Walker. Jaden Grohl has it on the near wing. Now he goes to Weston at the block. Whistle blows, and Hayden Weston just being too physical. Another offensive foul for Weston. Six and a half to go in the first half. Talking about Jaden Grohl, coming off the bench this season, he's got a season high three points and he has double that and some. He's got seven midway through the first half of action. 28-7 score, Rebels leading the Eagles. Budge dribbling along the baseline, picking up his dribble, going up top to Knorr. Knorr passes it off and nearly, but great save there by Braden Neals. It nearly had an over and back call. Neal passing it across to Castro. Castro looking for a friendly face. Goes inside to Ata. Ata kicks it out to Knorr beyond the three-point line. It's circled back up to Castro. Picks up a screen from Budge. Facing a double team. Wants to get rid of it. Had his pass nearly taken away, but Budge working along the baseline with it where he picked up his dribble a couple feet outside the block. Castro in the corner. Passing to Budge on the near wing. 
Budge nearly lost his dribble but regains possession. Dribbles inside the paint, kicks it out to Atop. Puts up a shot, nearly falls, but gets his own miss. Kicks it out to Noor. Now Budge has it, who dribbles in, puts up a floater. That got blocked, and Adams comes up with the ball. Woods passes up court to Walker, who leaves it for a trailing grow. Whose shot is good. 30. It's now with Castro at the top of the arc. Castro taking a couple dribbles, guarded closely by Jaden Grohl. Picks up a screen from Noor. He kicks it out to Budge at the free throw line. Entry pass goes to Ata. His shot was short, rebounded by Adams. Just under five minutes to go in the Stacey's Repair second quarter. Woods dribbles across half court, taking directions from Coach Cornea. Faces some pressure, but dribbles out of it now. Goes to Walker on the far wing. Trey Walker. Overhead, now dribbles inside, picks up his dribble at the free throw line, and the ball is nearly stolen, whistle blows, and it's going to be a foul on Braden Neal. So, no, I beg your pardon, it's a foul on Trey Walker. So it's Eagle basketball with 4.29 to go in the first half. Rebels leading 30-7 to on the station on main scoreboard. Ronald Castro inbounds it for USDB. Goes to Kelvin Budge. Budge dribbling across half court. Looking to find someone to go to. Dribbles to the far wing. Now gets it out to Ronald Castro. Castro dribbling from one wing to another. He's on the near corner. Dribbling along the perimeter and signaling out commands to his teammates. Castro guarded closely by Weston. Now Weston backs off and a screen picked up. Castro... Had a timeout called as he made his way towards the corner. So the Eagles call time. A.J. Moody, the head coach for USDB, wants to talk things over. We'll step aside. Rebels leading 30-7, to just under four to go in the first half. You rely on your vehicle every day. Make sure your ride gets the best service, repairs, and maintenance possible. Stacy's Repair in Woodruff provides the highest quality, the latest technology, and the newest equipment to give your vehicle the absolute best auto care available. Family owned and operated since 1992, your friends at Stacy's Repair promise to always deliver value and outstanding, honest, and knowledgeable service, regardless of repair size or difficulty. Stacy's Repair, the ones who truly care. Three fifty-six to go in the first half. Rebels leading the USDB Eagles thirty to seven on the station on main scoreboard. Inbound pass will go to Budge. He picks up a screen from Castro. Dribbles to the near wing. Now making his way along the, to the corner, guarded by Adams. Now along the baseline, picks up his dribble near the block. Gets it out to Neal. Neal passes off to Castro at the top of the arc. Castro dribbling inside the perimeter and into the near corner. He circles it back up top to, to Budge. And Budge looked for Neal down low. Pass escapes him, gets out of play, and it's Rebel basketball. Three and a half to play in the Stacey's Repair second quarter. Rebels leading by 23. Walker has it on the far wing. Goes to Woods. He moves up to Adams for an elbow shot. That goes off the rim. Offensive board by Weston. Whistle blows. Good look by Justin Adams, had tons of space and shot was just short. Whistle though is a foul on USDB and it's Hayden Weston taking a trip to the Bear Lake Realty free throw line to shoot two. Weston, first free throw on the way and perfect. Beautiful swoosh by Weston. That's his third point of the quarter. Second free throw up and good. So it is 32-7. Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard. Eagles cough it up and Rebels come up with a loose ball. Rich moving the ball along the perimeter and it's with Woods right now.
Walker has at the top of the arc. On the near wing right now, it's moved down low to Walker who pulls up from eight feet. That's too deep and it's rebounded by Knorr. Logan Clough checking in the game. Freshman for Rich. Eagles with just under two and a half to play. Entering the paint right now and Budge picks up his dribble near the free throw line. He's got a man down low open, it's George. George trying to go up with it but Weston comes away with the ball. Here comes Woods, he pushes the ball up the court and it's with Walker. Goes to Weston from the free throw line, knocks it down. Hayden Weston with five points. And the Rebels leading 34 to seven with under two to go in the Stacey's Repair second quarter. Weston with six points, beg your pardon. Whistle blew on the offensive half of the court for USDB who are working on offense. And foul is called and it's gonna be going against Logan Clough who just entered the game for Rich, his first. And that's the team six. Next foul, Rich will be on the other end of a one and one. Eagles moving it inside the perimeter and Budge lost his footing and went flying and a travel is called. 140 to go in the first half. Walker will inbound it now to Woods. Woods dribbling across half court. Dribbling out of some traffic and going to Clough on the far wing. It's with Walker at the top of the arc. He moves it over to Woods on the near side. Down low now to Adams at the block. Shot no good. Rebounded by Eta. Eta with just a little over a minute 15 to play in the first quarter, in the first half. Castro dribbling in, whistle blows, and there'll be a foul on the Rebels. Fouls on Nate Woods. That's his first team seventh, so we've got some free throws coming up, or at least one, as we'll have a first half of a one and one right now. And yeah, we're shooting free throws. One eleven to go in the first half, Rebels leading 34 to seven on the station on main scoreboard. And it's Ronald Castro who will shoot at least one, potentially two if he knocks down the first. First free throw up, off the glass and good. Banks it in. Castro, the leading scorer for this Eagles team through nearly two quarters of play. 34 to eight right now. Second free throw for Castro. As he takes a couple of last dribbles, is up and no good. Rebounded by Adams. He gets it out to Clough, who moves it up the court to Walker. In the corner with Woods, who leaves it for Walker at the block. His shot is off the rim, and it's saved by Eta and George. Eagles have it. They're bringing the ball up the court. Under a minute to go in the second quarter. Budge dribbling in. Picks up his dribble, kicks it out to George on the far corner. He moves it up top to Castro, who dribbles inside the perimeter and gets it out to Budge on the far wing. Budge taking a couple dribbles, puts up a shot. That's off the back rim, rebounded by Woods. 40 seconds to play. Woods up court to Walker. Beneath the basket, shots off the glass and good. 36-8, Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard with Trey Walker picking up his first basket of the season. Under 30 seconds to play. Castro dribbling inside the perimeter. Puts up a shot that rolls off the back rim. Whistle blows on the rebound attempt. And I think this is going to be a foul on Rich. A couple bodies collided and Castro hit the deck afterwards. Indeed it is. It's a foul on the Rebels. That's the team's eighth foul. First foul for Justin Adams. It has 20 seconds remaining on the clock here in the Stacey's Repair second quarter. Castro's free throw up and off the back rim, rebounded by Adams. 17 seconds, Woods takes the ball and now dribbles across half court. Goes to Walker on the far wing. 10 seconds to go, Walker up top to Clough at the top of the key. Now on the near wing, Woods, his entry pass was tipped away. Three seconds, ball gets across half court and now re-entered, one second. Walker at the buzzer, short off the rim, and that's how the first half ends. Rebels will go into the halftime break with a 36-8 lead at home over the visiting USDB Eagles. 
We'll step aside and get into our Crawford Trough halftime show with some of our first half highlights. Don't go anywhere. More Rebel basketball coverage is coming your way. Some decisions in life have a critical and lasting impact. For example, choices concerning your health care. You want a hospital that consistently offers high quality care and service. For Bear Lake area residents and visitors, Bear Lake Memorial Hospital has been providing optimum health care to our community for more than 70 years. And Bear Lake Memorial has been recognized again this year as a top 20 hospital in best practices for quality. Bear Lake Memorial Hospital in Montpelier, Idaho. Count on us to care. History from the gangsters of the past like Babyface Nelson, Pretty Boy Floyd, and Bonnie and Clyde are at the Legal Tender Restaurant located inside the Best Western Dunmar Inn. In 1957, retired FBI agent Jack Dub Mills purchased the motel. During his FBI career, Dub worked with many other famous agents like Elliot Ness and Sam Cowley to take the criminals down. From the names on the menu to the nostalgia on the walls, notorious figures from the 1920s are all around. Come and enjoy a delicious meal surrounded by history today at the Legal Tender Restaurant, 1601 Harrison Drive, Evanston. Randolph, Utah is a town of extremes. At an elevation of almost 6,300 feet and with temperatures over 90 in the summer and often 40 below in the winter, the folks who call Randolph home have to be a hardy crew. Maybe that's one reason the simple things in life mean so much to Rich County. Residents value hard work, education, respect, a love for God, family, and country, and being a good neighbor. Mayor Lynn Weston and the town board proudly support the Rich Rebels and hope you'll be able to visit soon and come back often. In the state where life is elevated, live your life in a higher gear. Cash Honda Yamaha can help you enjoy our beautiful local terrain, whether it's in the valleys, mountains, snow, or water. So get out and enjoy all nature has to offer at a higher speed. Visit Cash Honda Yamaha in Cash Valley to start living your life at your new speed. Visit us in Hyde Park, just north of Logan, Utah. Welcome into our Crawford Trough Halftime Show, the place to eat and drink in all of Rich County. Their winter hours are Thursday through Saturday, 11 to 7. So you know what? After this matchup, why don't you stop by the Crawford Trough right here on Main Street in Randolph and pick yourself up a delicious burger. All right, folks, it's halftime here between the Rebels and the Eagles. Rich leading 36 to 8 on the station on Main Scoreboard. And so that sets up some great first half highlights for the Rebels presented to you by the town of Randolph, home of the Rich Rebels. Good luck from the mayor, Lynn Weston, board members, Sim Bell, Brian Wires, Larry Kennedy, Melanie Lim, and the town clerk, Lana Peer. So we'll have our first half highlights and some first half stats. Uh, first, though, I had to clean up a mess I made. Logan Clough is a sophomore, not a freshman, and that's a big difference because I think people don't want to be called a freshman if they're a sophomore. There's a difference between calling someone a junior when they're a senior, but no one wants to be put down to a freshman level. So Clough, who entered the game midway through the second quarter, had some good minutes there and some good looks. All right, let's check out some of our first-half stats. So the retro, for the Rich Rebels, they shot 52% from the field. 11 of 22 from inside the arc and a good four for seven from outside the three-point line. From the free throw line, though, only five trips and only shot down two of them. So not the great, uh, best performance from the Rebels at that Bear Lake Realty free throw line. And for the USDB Eagles, they shot a, a low 21% from the field. Did not shoot any three-point shots back in that first half. So 0 for 0. And then at the free throw line, they went 2 for 7 from the Bear Lake Realty free throw line. When it comes to rebounding, the Rich Rebels out-rebounded the Eagles 17-7. to Leading rebounders for the Rebels were Riley Taylor and Justin Adams, both with five. Eagles, meanwhile, they had 14. Actually, Rebels out-rebounded USDB 17-14, to not 17-7. to And offensively, the Eagles had five offensive boards, led by Ata with nine. So Ata just gobbling up all those misfires. And that's some of our first half stats here on the Crawford Trough Halftime Show. We'll step aside for another quick break, and when we return, it's time for the first half highlights right here on the Station on Main scoreboard here in Randolph with the Rebels leading 36-8. to 
Whether you need a big bite to eat, a tasty snack, or a sweet treat, the Crawford Trough in Randolph has it all to satisfy your cravings. From tasty burgers and wraps, patty melts and perfect pitas to fresh salads, home-cut fries, crispy onion rings, and of course, that silky smooth ice cream. The Crawford Trough can feed your hunger and then some. And if you haven't tried one of the troughs... Success doesn't come by accident. Success requires hard work, perseverance, learning, sacrifice, and believing in yourself. Eddie and Todd Jensen established the Mound Valley Cattle Company in Thatcher, Idaho on these very principles. The students, staff, athletes, and coaches at Rich High School value these same fundamentals in education and activities, in athletics, and in life. Good luck, Rebels, from Mound Valley Cattle Company, serving customers in Utah, Idaho, and Wyoming since 1997. Welcome back into our Crawford Trough halftime show. We've got a little under four minutes to go until the Epic Recreation third quarter gets underway. It's the home Rebels leading the USDB Eagles 36-8. to And let's check out some of our first half highlights. And I love games where the bench just goes off. And that's what we're seeing right now. At the end of the first quarter, John Scott had nine points. And He's got himself a nice comfy seat on the bench right now because move aside for the likes of Jaden Grohl and Hayden Weston who are having sensational games right now off the bench. Jaden Grohl entered with a season-high three points. He has double that and then some. He had five points in the first quarter, four in the second, nine points for Grohl. And then Hayden Weston is just enforcing his will down low. He's got six points off the bench and all of them coming from Low post shots or at the free throw line after drawing some contact. Trey Walker had a nice basket as well in transition. Rebels doing a great job of pushing the ball up the court. And we got some buzzers going off here. The Rebels are doing a great job of when they're in transition, they're executing their plays. They're moving it down the court, and then if the shot's not there, there are trailing players coming in with a full head of steam and just polishing off some great shots. And other great highlights we saw were Riley Carrillo, four points. He had a nice little, he had some nice looks down low. And like I mentioned, John Scott, nine points in that first quarter, all coming from deep. Scott is just adding on to it's been a great season so far from his perimeter shooting. And that's what you want to see as we move into February. And you know what comes after February? March. You know what rhymes with March? Madness, in a way, because that's what we get in March in all basketball. All right, folks, we got a little under two, over two minutes to go, and then we'll have the third quarter of action. That's going to do it for our Crawford Trough halftime show. Rebels leading 36 to 8. When you're looking for one location that is centrally located in Wyoming to host a business meeting or corporate retreat, always consider the Come On In Hotel and Suites in Casper first. With meeting rooms and amenities that everyone can enjoy at the Come On In is the best place to host events. The rustic decor, fireplaces, jacuzzis, pool, and large indoor atrium will make your event memorable. Call today and find out the ways we can help make your event a success. Come On In Hotel and Suites in Casper. Call 307-472-6300. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I had just purchased new tires at Plains Tire in Evanston. The trained tire technicians at Plains Tire expertly mounted, balanced, and aligned my new tires, so I was feeling good. While I was there, they changed my oil, checked my brakes, fixed my AC, and made sure my shocks were in tip-top shape. And with their lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations, I was ready to roll. So, thanks to Plains Tire, when two roads diverged in a wood, I took the one less travel. Plains Tire, 157 Fair River Drive, Evanston. Signage is a critical part of your business. It helps customers find your front door. Rocky Mountain Sign will provide you with expertly designed signs, LEDs, channel letters, as well as skillfully cut signage using wood, metal, plastic, and other mediums to help your customers find you with high quality signage. Using the best technology, designs, and installation by Rocky Mountain Sign. Your signage says a lot about your business. Work with the professionals at Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street in Evanston, Wyoming. My name is Dr. Micah Pullins. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Evanston Regional Hospital. Orthopedic surgery is the practice of medicine centered around bones and joints. It's all about movement and activity and getting that to be less painful. Watching a patient with a specific problem, whether that's pain or decreased range of motion, and being able to treat them 
by far the best part of my job. We're ready for our third quarter of action here in Randolph between the Rebels and the Eagles. Rich out there with the same five that ended the first half. You've got sophomore Logan Clough, junior Nate Woods, sophomore Trey Walker, junior Hayden Weston, and junior Justin Adams. Eagles start it off and they'll work on offense. It's Budge having his pass deflected out of play and it will stay with USDB. Inbound pass coming up now for the Eagles. In the far corner, it's Eta. Eta trying to find someone to go to. He looks to an open kneel on the far wing who moves up top to Budge. Budge picks up a screen, enters inside the zone, wants to put up a shot, instead draws contact and a foul. Free throw shooting coming up now for junior Kelvin Budge. Foul was on Nate Woods. It's the team's first foul of the second half, and that's Woods' second. 7.41 to go in the Epic Recreation third quarter. Make your vacation an epic one to remember, epicrecreation.net, or give them a call at 435-946-EPIC. First free throw up and good from Budge. 36 to nine now to start the third quarter. Budge with a second free throw opportunity. Takes a couple dribbles for good measure. And second one's good as well. Two for two for Budge at the charity stripe. It's 36 to 10 now, Rebels leading. And Rich nearly turned it over but they regained possession. Woods has it on the near wing. He moves it up top to Clough. Clough dribbling momentarily inside the perimeter, then dishing it out to Woods, who dribbles across to the other side of the court. It's with Walker at the top of the key. He looks inside to Clough, who puts it in off the glass. Logan Clough with his first basket of the day and the season. 38 to 10 Rebels. Budge guarded by Woods, working on offense. Eagles. Going down low to Castro, who feeds it back inside to a cutting budge, who shots off the glass and good himself. 38 to 12 now. Four quick points for the Eagles to start this third quarter. Rebels still comfortably ahead with 6.45 and counting to go in the third quarter. Adams had at the free throw line and spits it up top to Walker. Walker facing pressure and he knew it the moment he did it, a double dribble. Substitution being made, we've got Tyler Stevens coming into the game for Rich. Stevens, a junior. We got Jaden Cornea, numbers wrong on my list here. Cornea, a freshman entering the game, I beg your pardon. Here's Castro, dribbling on the far wing for the Eagles. Under six and a half to go. Castro dribbles inside the paint, puts up a shot, it's short. Ata gets the loose ball and nearly put it in. Gets his own miss, though. Third chance for the Eagle offense. They get it out to Castro on the near wing. Castro dribbling outside the arc. He goes in the corner now to Budge. Budge dribbles in, puts up a shot from the block. Rebounded by Walker off the miss. Cornea gets it out now to Woods. Woods dribbles across half court. Goes to Cornea on the far wing. Under six to play in the Epic Recreation third quarter. Walker moves it along the perimeter to Woods on the near wing. Woods hits up a cutting Cornea who finishes it off. Good basket from Cornea. It's 40 to 12. Rebels leading out of the station on main scoreboard. Budge dribbling across half court. Guarded by Woods and now dribbles towards the baseline. Kicks it out to Neal. He moves it to the top of the arc with Castro. Castro inside the perimeter and gets it back outside to Budge in the corner. Budge driving in, kicking out to Keita. Whistle blue though, a foul on the floor. So we'll have an inbound play coming up now for the Eagles. That's the third foul for the Rebels in this early going of the third quarter. 
It's on Adams, his second. Keita to inbound it. 5.16 to go in the third quarter. Keita trying to find an eagle. Moves it all the way up top to Castro. Castro dribbling into the corner, whistle blue as that was Budge setting a screen and then hitting the deck and fouls on Woods. That's his third, team's third as well. I think it should be the team's fourth. But the scoreboard currently reads third. Three fouls on Woods. He's busy right now with his hands. Keita to inbound it. Trying to find someone. And Coach Moody was trying to call time. They didn't get off in time, but the ball was kicked out of play. Kind of a weird series of events, but it ends with a, another inbound pass for the Eagles. Keita looks down low to Budge. Pass was tipped, and Cornia comes up with it. He gets it out to Woods. Woods dribbling across half court. Goes to Walker on the near wing. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Clough getting it out to Woods on the far wing. Now fed inside to Adams who couldn't handle it. And ball was passed out of play. But it was last touched by USDB. So it will stay with Rich. Woods inbound pass to Adams. Whistle blue though as Adams was fouled before his shot. The basket was made but it will not count. So we'll have another inbound play here. It'll be Woods beneath the basket. That's the first foul for the Eagles in the second half. Inbound pass goes to Walker in the near corner. He rotates it back up top to Clough. Now Woods, a corner three, too deep. Rebounded by Walker. He gets it and kicks it out to Cornea for another three-point shot. That's off the rim, rolls around, takes a bounce. Adams gets the loose ball, and his shot attempt is off the target. Rebounded by Castro. Eagles pushing the ball up the court. Castro dribbling inside the paint, puts up a long shot. Two-point range, and it's no good. Short rebounded by Walker, who gets it out to Cornea. Now moved across to Woods. Just over four minutes to go in the Epic Recreation third quarter. Woods passing it over to Clough on the far wing. Logan Clough moving it to Walker, and now it's passed across to Woods on the near wing. Circulated back up top to Corny, and it's passed right back to where it came from with Woods. He goes inside to Walker, kicks it out to Clough for three. That's off target, rebounded by Woods. Clough gets the ball afterwards, and he hands it right back to Woods. Nate Woods dribbles towards the top of the arc. 3.45 to go in the third quarter. Woods guarded by Budge. Picks up his dribble. Wants to go inside with it. Loose ball. Eagles come up with it. They move it up top to Budge who puts up a shot with some traffic and knocks it home off the window. 40-14. to 14, Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard after a basket from the Eagles. Cornea with it on the far wing. He goes in the corner with Woods who looked down low and Walker's pass to Clough was off target, got out of play and it will stay with the Rebels. Johnson checking into the game for Rich right now for Nate Woods. 3-10 and counting to go in the third frame. Rebels leading 40-14. to Budge dribbling along the perimeter. Into the corner now for the Eagles. Moves it up top to Neal. He goes to Castro. Castro stuck in the corner. Wants to get rid of it. Goes to Budge on the far wing. He dribbles inside the arc. Puts up a floater off target. Rebounded by Weston. Weston gets it out to Cornea. And the Rebels will slow things down as Cornea dribbles across half court. 2.40 to go in the first quarter. In the, in the third quarter, I beg your pardon. Cornea, a corner three. That's off target. It's rebounded by Clough, who gets it up top to Walker. Out to Cornea at the top of the arc and near the center court logo. Bounce pass goes to Clough on the baseline. He puts up a mid-range shot. That's no good. Rebounded by Weston, whose second chance is no good as well. Johnson comes up with the loose ball. Whistle blue at the block. And a foul is going to be assessed here against USDB. 
It's on Ronald Castro, team second, with 2.12 to go in the third quarter. It's Castro's first foul. Johnson with it on the near wing, taking a couple dribbles towards the top of the arc. Handing it off to Cornea on the far side. 42-14. Eagles bringing the ball across half court. Budge dribbling into the near corner. Picking, picking up his dribble, has to get rid of it, whistle blue. And we get timeout called. Indeed we did. Timeout is called by the Eagles with 1.32 to go in the third quarter. Rebels leading 42 to 14 on the station on main scoreboard. Whether you're kicking up dust in the hills, making waves down on the lake, or taking advantage of the world's greatest power, don't just hope to have fun. Take that sled by the handlebars and make your time at Bear Lake epic. Epic Recreation rents equipment and cabins for your vacation fun at beautiful Bear Lake. From watercraft large and small to UTVs, sleds, and more, Epic Recreation has it all to go on-road, off-road, or out on the Caribbean blue water. Book your adventure at epicrecreation.net. Welcome back to Randolph where the Rebels are ahead against the visiting Eagles 42 to 14 on the station on main scoreboard. And we're gonna have an inbound play right now for USDB who called timeout as they were in a bit of a pickle in the corner. So it's Keita to inbound it for the Eagles. 1.32 to go in the Epic Recreation third quarter. Keita with an inbound play. Trying to find someone. Pass was tipped and Castro comes up with it. He dribbles towards the center court logo. Castro signaling out commands to his teammates. Dribbling inside the paint. Putting up a shot and one. Whistle blew. And we've got a free throw coming up for Castro. who had one of the better shots you'll see all day. Drew some contact and put it up off the glass from about eight feet out. We'll update our station on main scoreboard as it is now 42 to 16. Strong third quarter so far for the Eagles. They were held to eight points at the half. They've doubled that here in the third quarter as Castro knocks down the free throw, making it a 42 to 17 ball game. Rebels offense moving in along the perimeter, going inside to Adams, back up top to Cornea. Cornea. Picking up his dribble and going to Woods, who passes it to the elbow where Adams is waiting for it. He gets it out to Johnson. Now Cornea and on the far on the near wing. Moves it up top to Woods and down low on the wing. I beg your pardon with Johnson. Johnson bounce pass between defenders to Adams, who lobs it over to Weston, gives it back to Adams. Shot's no good. Offensive rebound for Weston. Shot goes up and one. Hayden Weston draws some contact and he'll shoot a free throw trying to complete the three-point play. Aiden Weston picking up another basket today. He's got eight points so far, looking for his ninth as he takes a trip to the Bear Lake Realty free throw line. Knocked down two back in the first half. That one rolls in and out. Rebounded by USDB. Eagles push the ball up the court. It's Budge dribbling inside the arc and now dribbling out and back inside the perimeter. Budge putting up a long shot. No good. Offensive putback is, though, by Keita. 44-19, and Keita has 14 rebounds. He's been a menace down low. 17 seconds, Adams shots, good off the window. Justin Adams picking up his first points of the day. It's 46-19, seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Eagles holding on for the last shot, three seconds. Castro in the corner, one second at the buzzer, no good. So the first quarter, the third quarter comes to an end, and it's the Rebels holding on to their first half lead, 46 to 19 against USDB, setting us up for our Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter right after this. 
Nothing makes your kid feel like a superstar more than seeing his or her very own fathead in the stands. Fathead car decals and yard signs are inexpensive and easy to get at Rocky Mountain Sign in Evanston. Whether it's for the big game or to cheer on the high school band, our children make us proud in so many ways. Show your pride today. Go Rebels! West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street, Evanston. This presentation of Rich High School Athletics is also brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all of the chiropractic work you need as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-789-0043. Welcome into the Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter. The Rebels will start it with a 46-19 lead on the station on main scoreboard. Woods takes the inbound pass for the Rebels. He goes to Johnson on the far wing. He put up a tough three. Kata comes up with the shot. Here comes Castro and the Eagles. Castro dribbling inside the paint, putting up a floater. That's short, rebounded by Cornea. Cornea taking the ball across half court. Goes to Johnson on the near wing. Johnson bounce pass to Cornea in the corner. Fed it inside to Adams. He kicks it out to Johnson. Moved over to Cornea on the wing. He dribbles towards the top of the arc and to the other wing. Hands it off to Woods. To Woods Woods, going to Cornea in the corner. Three-point shot is good. Oh, his foot on the line, they'll say. Yeah, foot was on the line, so just a long two-point shot. Nevertheless, the lead is pushed out to 48 to 19 for the Rebels to start the fourth quarter. Eagles have it on the block. Budge kicks out to Keita. Keita getting through some traffic, trying to get out to Budge, and the loose ball has fell, fallen to Kelvin Budge. Budge nearly had the ball stripped away, puts up a tough shot. That's no good. Loose ball rebounded. Nor has it right now for USDB. Nor passes to Neal at the top of the arc. It's with Budge on the near wing. Budge dribbles towards the block, kicks it out to Neal in the corner. Now Castro dribbling inside the paint, drew some contact. And a pair of free throws coming up for Ronald Castro, and he appears to be a little shaken up along with Hayden Weston. We'll step aside for a quick break. It's a 48-19 Rebel lead with 6.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Some decisions in life have a critical and lasting impact. For example, choices concerning your health care. You want a hospital that consistently offers high-quality care and service. For Bear Lake area residents and visitors, Bear Lake Memorial Hospital has been providing optimum health care to our community for more than 70 years. And Bear Lake Memorial has been recognized again this year as a top 20 hospital in best practices for quality. Bear Lake Memorial Hospital in Montpelier, Idaho. Count on us to care. Both Weston and Castro for the Rebels and Eagles make their way towards the bench. Hopefully, actually, I beg your pardon, Castro's on the free throw line right now. But Weston on the bench, hopefully he's okay. So we'll have two free throws coming up for Castro with 6.28 to go in the Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter. First free throw off the back rim, no good. It's a 48-19 lead for the Rebels. We got some new faces on the court right now. Clough re-enters the game for Rich. Second free throw for Castro's good. 48 to 20. Rebels up by 28. Clough has it on the near wing for Rich. Just over 6.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. Cornea along the baseline, dribbling in, going to Adams, just outside the free throw line. His shot's too deep. Rebound by Walker, who puts it up and knocks it down. 50 to 20. Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard. It's with Budge on the near side. Budge putting out commands to his teammates, wants to get a screen. Now he is 
making his way towards the near wing. Budge moves it to Castro on the near wing. Castro, entry pass to Budge, eventually goes to Keita, who kicks it out to Knorr, except it's too high for Knorr, and that's going to be over and back. Over and back called after USDB put it across half court, and it will be a Rebel inbound play. We'll have a Mound Valley Cattle Company inbound play now. And Walker inbounds it to an unexpected cornea who eventually gets it. And it's going, moved over to Johnson on the far wing. Johnson passing it to Clough at the top of the arc. He goes to Corny on the near wing. Now with, with Walker down low to Adams. Puts up a shot and just enough touch on it to bury the shot off the glass. It is 52-20. to 20, Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard. Justin Adams picks up his fourth point of the game. Meanwhile, Eagles miss their shot. Rebounded by Clough. He gets it out to Walker, who passes to Cornea. Gets across half court. Johnson on the near wing. Under five to play in the game. Walker at the elbow. Kicks it out to a mid-range shot from Cornea, who knocks it down. 54-20. Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard with a little over four and a half to play. Budge has it and passes to Castro on the near wing. Castro makes his way towards the top of the arc, has his pass taken away. In fact, he gets it back, though. Puts up a tough shot along the perimeter too deep. Keita comes up with the rebound, though. Budge and the Eagle offense restart from the top of the arc. Screened by Castro. Budge enters the perimeter and re-dribbles out of it. Now pass across to Castro. His pass to Budge was taken away by Cornea. Whistle blows, and a jump ball is going to be called. Jump ball called, and it's going to stay with the Rebels. 4-12 on the clock here on, in the fourth quarter. Rebels up 34 points on the station on main scoreboard. Keita to inbound. It goes to Neal from the elbow. Shot was no good, whistle blew, shooting foul. So it's gonna be Braden Neal taking a trip to the Bear Lake Realty free throw line to shoot two with 4.09 remaining in the Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter. Neal, one of the starters for the Eagles. He's had a strong afternoon so far, picked up a couple points and looking to add to his total here. First shot from Neal is too deep. We'll have a second free throw as it was a shooting foul. That was the sixth foul, by the way, for Rich. Third foul for Justin Adams. Second free throw delivered and no good by Neal. But he ends up with his own miss and the Eagles will restart the offense with just over four to play. Castro is looking for Budge. Ball was passed and slapped out of play. It will stay with USDB, and the pass is intercepted. Here's Cornea going the opposite direction. Cornea, with a man on his tail, finishes the play with a nice basket. 56 to 20, after a rich county government steal from Cornea. Budge, working down low, drew some contact, and he'll make a trip to the free throw line himself. So some free throws coming up here as this game has slowed down with 3.47 to go in the Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter. We'll have two free throws for junior Kelvin Budge. He's been their go-to guy on offense today and has displayed why. Has had some creative plays. Budge with an ability so far to try to rectify some broken plays and make something out of nothing. Second free throw up and good, so Budge splits the two. It's 56-21. Johnson has it on the far wing. He goes to Corny at the top of the arc. Corny gives it back to Johnson on the far wing. Inside to Adams from the elbow. Shots no good, rebounded by Walker. He wanted to get it out, but the pass was off target, and it's a backcourt violation over and back. So it's going to be Eagle basketball with just under three and a half to play in the fourth quarter. 
Weston checking back into the game. That's a good sign to see. He got shaken up a little bit earlier. Adams will check out. Woods will re-enter again for the Rebels. And Logan Clough, a sophomore, will pop a squat. 56-21 on the station on Main School. Castro. Back to Keita. Over to Castro. Castro making his way towards the top of the arc. Plenty of space between him and the nearest defender. Now trying to enter the perimeter. Has his pass tipped up, but he regains it. And then looked for Neal, who wasn't ready for it. Pass got to the Eagle bench, and it will be Rebel Basketball. Inbound pass goes to Woods. Woods gives it across and over to Cornea. Cornea gives it back to Woods. Woods, bounce pass to the far corner for Johnson. Johnson at the elbow right now with pass to Walker and it's crossed over to Woods. Rebels trying to end inbound pass or entry pass and loose ball and somehow the Eagles come away with it. They've got Castro open up the court. Goes up strong, loose ball, and it's rebounded after a missed shot by Cornea. He passed to Walker, whistle blows. Pass went across half court, and it's going to be a foul on USDB. That's their team's fourth foul, and the third on Eta. Inbound pass goes to Woods. Just over two minutes to play in the Bear Lake Memorial Hospital fourth quarter. Woods in the corner, down low to Walker. Now the top of the arc with Johnson. Johnson facing some heavy pressure, gets it out to Cornea on the far wing. Cornea going up top to Trey Walker. Walker guarded closely by Castro, ditches out of a double team, edges the block with Weston, shot rolled in and out, but got his own miss. Second chance is good though. Good effort and hustle by Hayden Weston. It's 58-21, Rebels dominating. Eagles shot attempt was short and Walker comes up with it. Walker goes to Woods and near the center court logo. Under 90 seconds to play. Now it's with Trey Walker at the elbow. Gets now to Woods in the near corner. Moved across to Corny and up top to Johnson now. Johnson gets it across to Corny and down low to West Hayden Weston again and back to back buckets for Weston. 60 to 21, Rebels leading on the station on main scoreboard. That's the fourth point in the fourth quarter for Weston. Under a minute to play. Eagles working on offense. Budge puts up a fadeaway. That's no good. Rebounded by the Rebels. Woods will slowly dribble the ball near half court. Now gets it across the timeline. And it's with Johnson at the top of the arc. He gets it across to Woods on the far wing. 35 seconds to go in the game. Rebels leading 60 to 21. Top of the arc with Johnson. Rich is playing keep away at this point. Corny has it on the near wing. Woods takes a bounce pass from Corny at the top of the arc. And Nate Woods backpedaling towards the top of the arc, towards the center court logo. 15 seconds. Woods. Wind to run an offensive play. Goes to Johnson at the perimeter at the elbow. His shot's no good. Second chance from Weston is, though, and that will probably do it with under two seconds to go. And a buzzer shot from the Eagles is offline. Off the brick, off the glass, and no good. And that is it from Randolph. Your final score, 62-21. Rebels take down the visiting USDB Eagles. We'll step aside for a quick break, and when we return, we're going to have our post-game coverage of this one. Rich winning 62-21 over the USDB Eagles. Nothing makes your kid feel like a superstar more than seeing his or her very own fathead in the stands. Fathead car decals and yard signs are inexpensive and easy to get at Rocky Mountain Sign in Evanston. Whether it's for the big game or to cheer on the high school band, our children make us proud in so many ways. Show your pride today. Go Rebels! West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street, Evanston. It's human nature to think the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. That's not always true. 
especially when it comes to buying vehicles. This is Dennis Lynch, General Manager at Auto Farm Chevrolet. Dealerships pay the same price for new vehicles across America. The fact is the best deals are right here, in your own backyard. The difference is that our employees are your neighbors, people you can trust. Please visit us first, Auto Farm Chevrolet. We are your community-driven dealer. Welcome into our post-game coverage of this one as the Rebels knocked off the visiting Eagles 62-21. to Let's get into our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast recap. So the Rebels from the first whistle to the last had this one comfortably. They went into the end of the first quarter with a 24-5 lead over USDB. John Scott, one of the five starters, had nine points to lead all scorers in that first quarter. Then the second quarter had the Rebels pulling off the gas a little bit, going to their bench a little more. We saw Hayden Weston come in. He had six points in that second quarter. Jaden Grohl with nine at the end of the first half off the bench, along with a Trey Walker basket. At the end of two quarters of play, it was the Rebels leading 36-8. to eight. Then to start the second half, the Eagles kind of hit some offensive rhythms, picked up some good baskets from Ronald Castro and Kelvin Budge. A great day for Eta off the glass. He had a game high, close to 20 rebounds, I'd imagine, for Eta for the Eagles. But the third quarter saw the Rebels pull away a little bit more as they entered the fourth quarter with a 46-19 lead. In that third quarter, we saw a lot more play from some underclassmen, Logan Clough, Cornea, Johnson off the bench. Good to see those guys out there gaining some valuable minutes. And then finally, the fourth quarter was pretty much the same as the first three. The Rebels comfortably handling the Eagles, and the final score was 62-21. to That's our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast recap. Go visit Jimmy John's on Front Street in Evanston, where fresh and fast meet a delicious sandwich every time. I can't state enough my love for Jimmy John's and how wonderful and nice the people who work there are. Go visit them in Evanston for a great, consistently delicious sandwich. Now time for our Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Play of the Game. We're going to go to Hayden Weston. Weston off the bench, a little shaken up there after uh, a tough tumble, but he was doing some damage down low, reeling in offensive rebounds, going up strong with it, precision accuracy. So that is our Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Play of the Game. Have your pick of them when it comes to Hayden Weston, Hayden Weston baskets down low. Dr. McKay Frankham, Precision Family Dental Care at reasonable rates. Call the dental office of Dr. McKay Frankham to schedule your appointment today. 307-789-8910. We'll step aside for a quick break and we'll have the rest of our post-game coverage on right after this. Two roads diverged in a wood and I... I had just purchased new tires at Plains Tire in Evanston. The trained tire technicians at Plains Tire expertly mounted, balanced, and aligned my new tires, so I was feeling good. While I was there, they changed my oil, checked my brakes, fixed my AC, and made sure my shocks were in tip-top shape. And with their lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations, I was ready to roll. So, thanks to Plains Tire, when two roads diverged in a wood, I took the one less travel. Plains Tire, 157 Fair River Drive, Evanston. As one of the region's most visited websites, MyLocalRadio.com is here to serve you. Catch up on local and regional news and information. Buy, sell, or trade your good used items on the radio classifieds. Check the weather forecast or catch our live coverage of your high school teams in action, all on MyLocalRadio.com. Like us on Facebook so you never miss a giveaway and visit MyLocalRadio.com today to stream it all live. Welcome back into our post-game coverage as the Rebels knocked off the visiting USDB Eagles 62-21. to And let's get into our Auto Farm Chevrolet, a community-driven dealership shot and play of the game. All right, we got plenty to pick from when you put up 62 points offensively. Shot of the game, I'm going to go to Jaden Grohl. Beautiful three-point shot to start the scoring for him. That matched a... Season high for Grohl on that one shot alone. I saw Grohl working on some three-point shooting before the warm-ups even began today. 
So that's our shot of the game, play of the game for the Rebels. We will look to, where do we want to go? How about, so many to pick from. We're going to go with Trey Walker, sophomore off the bench, cashed in a couple baskets, one of them a nice shot down low along the baseline, pressure in his face and did not bother him. So Trey Walker and... Jaden Grohl, our Auto Farm Chevrolet shot and play of the game. And as for the Garden City game adjustment, none needed really. We check out the stats for the Rebels. Rich shot 52% from the field in the first half. At the end of the game, they shot 51% from the field. As for the Eagles, they finished shooting 21% from the field. Rich out-rebounded USDB 37-21. to Keita had a game-high 15 rebounds, though, for USDB. Hayden Weston led the Rebels with seven rebounds. Those are some of our final stats presented to you by Rob Laveson in our Garden City game adjustment where families play. All right, folks, before we wrap up our post-game coverage, I want to give some love to the wrestling team who's in regionals today. And we start with Levi Stonehouse versus J.K. Downing. Downing, uh, Jake and I beg your pardon, winning that one for first place. We've got Lucas Stonehouse in contention for first place as well at 116. Ethan Clarkson will compete for first place at 120. Uh, going for second, I beg your pardon. We've got Keller Sidaway going for first as well at 132. And he won, I'm hearing. Travis Gifford at 138. Lost and took second. Riker Cock at 160, competing for first. Not sure how that one's going to come out. Colton Johnson at 170, finished in third. Jaden Rao at 182 is going for first. And at the big fella, Eli Brooks at the 220 mark, going for first as well. Big, big, big. Good luck to all the wrestlers and congratulations to those who are finished already. That's regionals today. They'll have state in two weeks. A bit of a break there due to some COVID protocols. Well, folks, that's going to do it for our post-game coverage here at Randolph for Rich Eye as the Rebels improve to 9-5 on the season, taking down the USDB Eagles 62-21. to For my camera operator, Rob Lafson, my producer, Michael Williamson, Wilkerson, I'm Matthew Peterson signing off. Rebels winning 62-21. You've been tuned into Rich High School Rebel Basketball on Rebel Radio, KADQ FM 98.3, with video online at mylocalradio.com. Today's match has been brought to you by these Rebel supporting businesses Evanston Regional Hospital, Hoover Chiropractic, Cash Honda Yamaha in Cash Valley, The Come On In in Casper, Plains Tire, the Best Western Denmark Inn and Legal Tender, Freeway Tire, Auto Farm Chevrolet, West Star Printing, and Rocky Mountain Sign. The proceeding has been a wholly owned production of Old West Media, no portion of which may be used or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the aforementioned rights holder.